The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, the Friday edition, the Technical Friday edition. This is where we get a little bit more into the nitty gritties of the Chapman Wave methodology. Answer your questions. Those aficionados are starting to use the waveform. Know exactly what I'm talking about. That's why these questions come in on Thursday, especially for the Friday. Also, I have a couple of questions that I was asked about. Yesterday that I just missed getting to on the show, so I will uh, deal with those. Wow, let's just run the numbers because this is exciting. <clears throat> While the Dow has not made an all-time high, actually, let me move this away. I'll just do this right away. Let's go. We'll do. <clears throat> we'll do the charts right at the same time as I discuss the uh, parameters. The Dow is up seventy-eight at uh, 79 at 16,351. What does that do? In the Chapman Wave methodology, oh, I should have got my CD out and I forgot. In my Chapman Wave methodology, the, the premise, the prime function, the, the core, the root of the methodology is besides being the, Chapman, being the, the waveform that never sleeps because every single peak and every single trough is notated with a capital A on the upside and, and lowercase on the downside, not the point. The point is you want to go from an identifiable low bar. And what's so wonderful about this technique is ever since they've started the inverted shorts, you can deal because if you – I always ask this question in my Master Trader series. I say, well, are, are you – do you find yourself – how can I put it? There are some people, the natural tendency is to short. I've come across a number, number of people over the years – they are just really good at shorting, or oh, they are good enough at shorting that even in a bull market, they can make decent money by timing their shorts. They're, and they identify those patterns. And there are others who are, are very good at the long side. But when you've got an inverted, a mirror image with one bull and one bear of the same um, tradable that you're looking at, that's wonderful because... Whatever you're used to looking at, that's what you can identify. And in this case, always on the upside, we look for higher peaks and we label them peak A, B, C, D in uppercase letters. These where you've got to be a little bit careful. So what's happened is within this context, let me just show you what I show my subscribers in my opening call, my daily intensive service that goes out every single morning, starting very early in the morning until the 835 final, final chart, which is always the trader's corner. That's where we I give an uh, um, a synopsis, a little paragraph as a synopsis to what, what I expect for the day for those people who don't have time to read all the different uh, five or six pages or more that I send out. And basically what they look at is what's going to happen and then uh, bullet points from one to about 15 of either positions we have, we're looking at, we might be long, we might be short, the stops are changed, uh, we've got a half position we'd like to add or whatever it is. And that's the complexity of the uh, trader's corner, but it's a very simple read. Everything's very clear. Now, what I do is also on the daily, I do the Dow um, uh, in daily format, and then under this, I still do another paragraph of uh, what I'm looking at. But you see the dashed line, the Chapman Wave inside wedge, um, dash, pink dashed line there, and the left side, right side price time match, which says if we're going to go to all time highs of 16,588, the time limit will be sometime around the 7th of. March, number one. Number two is within this I drawn the rising wedge formation, which coincides with all the techniques that we're looking at. Uh, a previous left side, right side price time match, the price time match that we're looking at on the upside. But more importantly, what I'm looking at is the leg, the body, and I was expecting a breakout because in the Chapman wave, you expect to get to at least a peak D, a leg D and then a peak D. On the upside, that is the core that is the gist of, of, of the, the um, momentum side of it. And then after that, you can get a, uh, a restart. You can get an instant restart. You get a whole bunch of things, but you first got to get to a D. Now we're in leg D. Well, this is fascinating. Why? 
because the resistance to D, if it's today, is up at 16,413. Uh, We're at 16,351, up 78 right now. That's going to be quite a stretch. But we held beautifully that support level. Look right on the line today. And that line came in right at the low of uh, 16,258. So far, everything's on track. The MACD is at 90%. That's great. Uh, the MACD is very strong. The stochastic's at 90%. That's wonderful information that we can have. And the, st and the VIX has dropped down to 13.78. And you've got your leg D, the requisite leg D we were looking for in the 120-minute char chart. So everything's kind of done for the day. We could even turn around here. It doesn't matter. We wanted to see that leg D in the 120-minute in the chart and then in the daily. The trend is giving no indication whatsoever to say um, um, anything other than it's in total disbelief because it's at 1.43 instead of being kind of neutral at about 0.90 or 0.80 right now. This is just saying no one believes us. No one believes us. And I keep saying this is a mega bull market. Can you imagine how many not hundreds? or thousands, but thousands and thousands of points have been missed by people trying to short for, for exactly six years, when in fact the majority of the moves have been beautifully to the upside. The S&P is in leg C. Now I'm going to talk about that because it's Technical Friday, and on Technical Friday, uh, what we want to look at is um, where are the different indices? Well, here we go. Leg D in the uh, Dow. Major support now is at the 16,000, not major, daily support is between 16,310 and 16,290 if there's going to be a turnaround between today and Monday. But on the upside, we're at resistance. That resistance could get taken out. And then what we're looking at is the candle. Have we gone above 16,372 in the Dow? Well, the high today, 16,374. Yes, we have. So if we can close above that, it starts to open up the next level at 16,520, and then finally 16,588. It's going to be a bit of a slog, but it can do that. Why? Because the S&P, the 500 stocks, are only in leg C. That says you still have to get a peak C, which that could be Monday, and then a leg D, which could be Tuesday, and then we've got to be a bit careful because uh, D or E uh, in the S&P is where I'm anticipating we've got to start looking at the short side. We actually have begun looking at uh, buying the short side in, in sectors, not on the key index, indexes, just on a uh, particular sector. The stochastic is at 90% and the MACD is very strong. So I was asked the other day, what, what, what is my upside target for the S&P? And all I can say is, in my mind, I always have target numbers. Out loud, I do not do that. I stopped years ago giving those numbers until I can be well assured that the parameters I'm looking at are not, not pie in the sky. They are, they are viable and valid. And at this particular point, all I can say is that the up-channel resistance, that inside track resistance level, comes in next week between 1883 and 1900. Um, and I, I'm not saying we're going there. I'm saying that's the upside channel. I want to see how we close today. It's even more important than talking about the future. I want to see, well, the future, I guess. At 4 o'clock, I want to see where all the different indices close. And this weekend, I'll be doing something. I'm, I'm starting to put together a very comprehensive uh, a report for my subscribers. Um, I, I want them to be able to, to understand very clearly the monthly, the impact of the monthly chart. I'm just going to grab this for a moment here, the monthly chart right there. Uh, <laughs> grab the monthly chart, right? All right, it's there somewhere. Um, my monthly chart, which will be on the S&P, and it will say S&P monthly right there and S&P monthly right here. Give me one second. Uh, I've got callers waiting online. I don't want to be messing around here. There we go. Okay, that's the one I was looking at. That, leg D, extended today. If on Monday... Regardless of if, whether it's leg C in the, in the daily, if from Monday the entire week today's high in the S&P is not broken, March has begun with a potential peak B. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be a leg leg D in the um, in the monthly, and it could be leg E up in the uh, Dow if 16,588 is taken out. Quickly, we'll go through these numbers. 
Um, the S&P is up uh, 8 at 1863. The Dow is up 77 at 16,350. You've got the Comp Index, eh, just not, not doing all that well, up 12 at 433. Let's look at William was asking yesterday about Apple. I said Apple could very well touch that 528, 530 area. Uh, it's looking quite good right now. Just real, oh, I messed up. No, I don't want to do that right now. Let me go back. SPX.X. Now I can go back by highlighting that chart and saying Apple. Apple right now. Oh, it did it. So it went all the way to, oh, out to his target, uh, 532.75. Um, nice. And what I'd say is start taking off some, some, some of your option calls as it starts to get there because um, uh, we're in, getting close to some kind of a market top. So you want to – you can – you do the option trade a number of times. So let's see what happens here on the 120-minute chart of Apple, which will be right here. Uh, so this is a brand-new leg B. There was a great action yesterday. Still acting well, got repelled at that 532 level, which was, in fact, the 200-period exponential moving average. Did I do this chart yesterday in great detail? The Apple 120, I think I did. What happened to the no? Anyway, so that's the story there. Let's go on. You've got gold. Gold is down a little bit. Yeah, gold's down 580 at 1326. You know, I, I said that the GCG, I have to go to, no, GCH, oh boy, GC something or other, <clears throat> GC, uh, GCM. I think it's M. Am I messing around here? All right, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll get to it in a moment. I'll figure out which contract is. The GC. G is not active anymore, so I'm going to go to continuous contract of gold. Remember, it was getting to the 9 period moving average. It went to a peak D. I said it could be a pullback here, but that 200 period moving average of 1331 is like a magnet. We should pull below, try to touch it again, and whether it pulls back to a lower low and it retests the 1345 high, that's going to be the issue. But I, I said I suspect from the gold stocks itself and the GLD, and our gold and silver right now that we should be uh, pulling back somewhat, just having a digestive period. Still very positive, but later on in the year, I'm expecting lower lows. Let's go to silver. Silver right now continues contract. So it's peak DF, the nine period, at the 200 period moving average. It's under the nine period moving average. Same thing. Silver's not acting as well as gold, but we might see a rotation into that. Let's talk about. Um, uh, bonds right now, the TLT is down. The TLT is down uh, 36 at 108.15, and the um, TLT in the daily is at making a peak C after that H pattern to into a very nice U formation. Here's a chance that we could test the 109.34 mm -hmm. level. You go above it, that starts leg B in, in, the, in the weekly, and then that means that start looking at the VIX, start looking at the IVB, start looking at different areas for turnaround in the market. Um, and uh, one other thing is the dollar is down 47. Uh, Mike in Lakewood, California. Mike, what would you like to look at? Um, BIS. So I think you're going to get ready to go on Yep, yep, we'll be back. I don't want to break off before we have this interruption for a commercial, very important commercial. I'll be back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're new to TFNN, then you've probably heard some of our hosts and traders talk about the exciting charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. Tuesday, March 11th at 6.30 p.m., Dave White and Tom O'Brien will be hosting a live study session for anyone with a license to this exciting charting program. 
During this hour-long online workshop, Dave and Tom will lead a brief presentation along with taking questions from those that attend. Right now, we have a great deal for all new subscribers. You can sign up for the art of timing the trade charts and get your first entire month for only $1 while gaining access to this live event with Tom O'Brien and Dave White. For more information on how this exciting charting program works, you can click on the Charts button on the front page of TFNN.com today and check out some of the videos that walk you through a variety of the features included. Sign up now by taking advantage of this exciting offer for just $1 before it's too late. Visit TFNN.com today. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We're back. Dow's up uh, 84. SP's up 9. And we are on right now with Mike in Lakewood, California. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Good morning. Good morning. You starting to get a little rain there? Oh, yeah. It rained the last two days finally, so that's good. Good. That's very nice. So you'd like to look at BIS and the BIS. Yeah, I talked to you about this. Um, it was either early January or late December in the twenties. I decided not to touch it, um, which Good. looks like it would, um, I'm wondering if it's still too early. Should I wait until see if this S and P top stocks? It looks like the IBB is starting to trail um, the market. Correct. So let's go through a couple of things here. Um, the BIS is 200%. It is the pro shares, ultra short, NASDAQ, biotech, 200% short, the IBB. And the IBB right here, IBB, is the ETF, the iShares, the NASDAQ, biotech, iShares um, um, fund. And, in fact, it is trading because to date it is down 0.49%. It is down 1.23 at 270.92. I believe I've got it here as a peak D. But there's a pattern, um, a, a pattern, this is the traditional pattern of looking at um, a flag formation that could be a very positive breakout if, in fact, it takes out 274.81, it's liable to hit 275.40 and to go to the 276s very quickly. That's the thinking that I have. But I had also mentioned yesterday that there's a real good chance that the, um, the there's a doji forming in the weekly chart in a leg E. And I also, when I spoke at the uh, at the meeting that I, I gave a talk at um, on um, Wednesday night, I, I discussed this in great deal. In fact, out of all the different things that were happening and the different positions people had, the majority of people had biotech shares. And what I'd said is 
this is the first time since I was here last time, which was sometime in October, I believe it was, that I can, that I can say that if you have the biotech shares, if there is a pullback at any point, and I gave specific uh, levels uh, before, and I said, if you're in it, just don't listen to me. You've been the one that's been in the position that's been great. This is from October. No, I'm not in it yet. I, I haven't bought BAL. I, I, I just waiting. wanted to go through the thinking because I wanted to show how powerful this has been. And October is right here. So let me just get to that. Uh, you had May, June, July. October is right there. I'm showing the chart in Tiger, uh, Tiger TV. And, in fact, what happened was, I can't remember. I think I went in September, October. And I, that's right, end of September. And I said I'm seeing that there could be a pullback. And all I'm suggesting is you might want to lighten up just a little bit. And that money is what you want to put back because it's a sector that fund managers just keep coming back to over and over and again for the past couple of years. And it's been to their credit to do that. And they've more than made up any losses they've had from shorting anything else. What I'd said this particular time is that this is the first time I'm starting to get um, – signals in so many of the stocks that say there's a little room left in the daily charts, but the weekly and even the monthlies are just starting to give me a suggestion that if there is a turn down, and not many people know this because they haven't been there long enough, but when the, when the um, NASDAQ, bio, not the NASDAQ, any of the biotech stocks that have the screaming rocket type move to the upside, when they give ground, because there's very little support on the way up because they move so quickly, sometimes the move on the way down is very quick. And all I suggested was, depending on their portfolio, they might be considering right here in the, in the uh, 14 to 13 area, the BIS as like a little bit of an insurance policy. You and I are looking at this a little differently, I believe. You're looking yes. at, at it as if this time... The IBB could very well turn down and turn down quite sharply if it does that because so many of the stocks are in, now I can call them in overbought territory, before they were in very positive territory holding the 90% area, uh, uh, mid-90s in, in the stochastic. So now let's just go, you have no position. This is going to be my recommendation to you. I'm going to suggest at 1398 with a risk of one point, because I don't think it'll be more than 1298 if there is a move to the upside in the IBB between now and next week, where I think we're going to start getting some of these reversal signals. I'm going to suggest, depending on your portfolio and a whole bunch of other things, you're going to have to make those decisions, that you take at least a small position in the BIS, if you are thinking that the IBB and the biotechs in particular are starting to tank, and I'm going to do this, uh, we've got a number of callers, but I, I would like you to hold on. And as we get back, I'm going to run five or six of the stocks in the biotech, the top the stocks in the biotech, and we'll look at them together, and then it will help make some kind of decision. So hold on if you can, Mike, and, and Marvin is... In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customer capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full-month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. 
and he publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We are back. Dow's up 90 points, SP's up 10, and we're on with Mike and Lakewood. Mike, because there are a number of people waiting, and I've got a bunch of emails, let me do this. If I have a chance by the end of the show, I'm going to just run through five or six of the uh, top buyer techs. There's a little bit of a mixed market, but the most important ones are saying we're starting to run into a lot of uh, resistance pressure. My suggestion is nibble here on VIS. I would add if the IBB which is at 270.64, closes under 269, I'd add a little bit more, but I'd go slowly. I'd have it progressive. Why? Because when the IBB eventually starts to tank, you'll have plenty of time to add to the BIS. But I suggest give it about a point, uh, a point leeway right now. You hang on to, you start a little position on the BIS, and I would just, if you have enough patience to wait until maybe next week, Tuesday or Wednesday, until I get a mar any market sell signal, which I haven't got yet, then I think you're going to start to see the IBB start to uh, uh, go lower and the BIS increase. But I would, I would start a position right here. That's my suggestion. Hope that helps you, Mike. Thank you so much for calling. Let's go to Marvin in Orlando. Hi, Marvin. Do I have Marvin? Oh, hi. How, how are you, Basil? Uh, hi, hi, Marvin. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> you'd, like find to, mm -hmm. you'd like to look at what? Uh, GLD. Okay, so GLD, folks, is the SPY. It's the uh, uh, Spider uh, Gold Trust Fund. It's trading at 127.66, trades at one-tenth of the price of, uh, uh, of, um, of, of spot gold. And right now it's sitting on the nine-period moving average. And everything about the chart pattern that I'm looking at says it probably is a peak F that I've seen at 25, 
uh, on the 25th of February, about five days ago, confirmed four days ago. But I would, uh, do you have a position? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Are you looking to buy it or, what, or just looking to say what, what I, I, I'm looking at? Yeah, um, uh, what's a good point? Do you think we'll retest 1,200 or is it uh, going higher? Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So the way I'm looking at it right now, even the 120-minute chart has just given me an A, B, C, D, and that was a peak D. I'm looking at uh, the GLD pulling back. The 200-period moving average is kind of going to be a magnet for the, for, for the um, next two, three weeks. But at the downside, I'm looking at 125.90 to 124. Oh, I'd put it, I'd even say 124.30. That's the area that I'm thinking it needs to test to just take a breather. So I'm going to say to you, have patience. I believe if you want to buy the GLD, I don't think it's worth going to the DZZ to short gold right now. Um, you could see a couple of plop, plops to the downside in gold. But the, the gold stocks and gold itself have been holding, holding very well. Now they're a little bit overboard. I think it's just a necessary timeout between uh, five to maybe seven or nine sessions. And then, then it should try again to move to the upside and break into the 130s. So I'm going to suggest have a little patience. Next week, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll look at it again. If it's anywhere near the 126 to the 125 area, we'll look to see how the support is holding in the 120-minute chart. And if it's not doing anything but holding steady here, I might suggest something like buying just a little bit of the GLD, but it's only in preparation that if there is a move, a spike above 129, uh, 53, you at least want to be there. I'm suspecting it just needs a bit of a timeout. I don't have a signal to say that I can put a down arrow because the MACD is still strong and the stochastics at 87%. I have a feeling it's going to go to about 67% or so in the stochastic, and then we'll have a look at it to see whether it's worth buying that or the equivalent, which is one-tenth um, the price of the GLD, which is the IAU. So I'm going to say hold off, Marvin if you haven't got anything yet, but I don't think it's worth shorting. I have another quick question, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, so the market is approaching its five-year anniversary, I guess, for this rally? On the 6th of, yeah, on, well, the 3rd of uh, March for the Dow and the 6th for the S&P, yes. So this would be the, like, the top one, two, three, I guess, longest rallies? Without this a is a mega bull market. This is one of the most major bull markets we've had, certainly in my lifetime. It's just an incredible market. I would not be surprised if we get some kind of selling in March, um, but I'm waiting for my signals, and until I get my signals, we're holding mostly long positions um, in my opening call, and I just feel that I need to stay that way until I get the proof uh, that I'm looking at. There are a couple of stocks we just got which look like they are just beginning a nice move to the upside, so I don't want to jump the gun yet. All I'm saying is I think that next week or the beginning of the following week, we're going to get some kind of an anniversary turnaround. That's all I'm saying right now. I, I wouldn't go into any short position on the indexes at this particular time, only on certain sectors that uh, I think are starting to weaken. I hope that answers your question to, to a certain degree. Right. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for calling. Let's go to Sam in Philly. Sam, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? I've been well, thank you. How are you doing? So far, it's good. It's going to be like it's 50 degrees today, so I'm looking. Ah, you're just trying to tease me. We are, I don't know if we've even gotten into the 20s yet. It is freezing. You'd like to look at what, Sam? Oops, Sam. Uh, bad connection. Oh, I think ARR. Sam, you probably can hear me. I've got Armour Residential right now. It's a REIT. And um, I just give, give a call back if you're having some uh, technical uh, 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 um, problems. I don't know if you're in this position yet. I've got a peak D in ARR, which is trading at $4.25, down 0.01. I actually quite like the chart as a REIT. Uh, some of these little REITs, I think, uh, what I'm looking at are stocks that are in major se sectors that have had major moves to the upside, but the little tiny stocks, low price stocks, didn't move much and now are starting to move. So uh, this fits that category but I would not be buying it right now at 426. I'd try to have the patience. It is leg C with a probable peak C in the weekly chart, and I've got an up arrow which says it should go to D. The monthly chart is horrible. So ARR, as I'm looking at it now, I'm going to suggest if you are in it, 
stay in the position if you're in anywhere under 410. It's at 426 right now. But I'm suspecting that over the next week or so, depending on the market, if this thing can hold without breaking 418 to 416, what was that low? Yeah, 418 to 416, a tad underneath the low of the bar of the 13th of February. I'm suspecting that that would be a good time to look at it as a potential nibble. And I say nibble, why? Because what I want is for you to nibble, and it just starts to slowly, regardless of the market, it starts to move up, and it suddenly gets to 432. If it gets to 432 after you've nibbled on it around about that 420, 416-ish area, I would say to you, I, I know 418 to 416, I'd say, hey, you can add another little bit now, but that new, new one has to have a stop of about real tight, 8 cents or so. Why? Because it has to get to the candle of the 26th and break above 437. Boy, if it does that, the weekly will be improving with a stochastic at 87%. It'll probably go up to about 89%. And the daily will be very structurally uh, looking as if it wants to go to the 200 period moving average for the first time in the 453s. Good eye, but good eye as a, as a watch, hold, and nibble. I wouldn't get too aggressive with this because that monthly chart is still terrible. I hope that helps you. Oh, Sam, you're there? Sam, do you own ARR? Yeah, yeah. yeah Basil, oh, how are you, sir? Sorry we got disconnected. Yeah, good. So I, you probably didn't hear me because you were busy trying to get back online. Oh, actually, what I said is... I heard, I heard in the radio like 416 is a good price to get in, right? Yes. Okay. Between 418 and 416. So if you, if you own it below that, then that's the part that you'll be w wanting to watch support. If it holds support, regardless, I'm em emphasizing, regardless of what the market does, if it's holding well, then what I want you to do is you can actually add a little bit as a trading position. And if that starts to climb above 428, 431, and then out of the blue in the next seven to nine sessions, it just suddenly pops above 437, that is very good action in the stock. Monthly chart is horrible. Weekly chart is improving, improving enough for me to suggest that it will become a trade. If it hangs around 418, 416 and cannot get any traction and then goes even one penny below to the 415 area, I'd say any core, any core position you have, tighten it up unless you've got it way lower down, closer to four. So I, no, I, I think you've got a good three. eye. I think you've got a yeah. stock that has the potential. Uh, it has a nice risk reward of what we're talking about. You're going in at about 418, 416, a risk reward of about eight cents. And then out of the blue, you can see a pop up of about 65 to maybe even 70 cents if it takes out the high of 440. So that, the p risk re to reward, I think, is there. So I hope that helps too. you. Yeah, thank you very much, Basil. Thank you so much for calling. I'd like sure. to hear from you again. Thank you, Sam. Have a great weekend. Sure. You're lucky to have a warmer weather. Sure. Now, folks, I had a number of emails. I want to get to them right now. First of all, um, was it Audrey? Yep, Audrey wanted to know about sugar. She wanted to call yesterday doing Larry's show and it was just a little late, so uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't see that uh, she was calling. I've got a potential PD. Remember, I've been very favorably inclined towards sugar. I've drawn the patterns. It's broken out in a shorter time span. So this is the continuous contract. If you're looking at SB, I'm going to go to H, and I'm not even sure. It's tra H is trading March. The, the, I don't know if March tr is trading right now, uh, but that's made a P. Yes, it is. Made a peak C holding the nine period moving average. I like the action. The nine period moving average between 17 points, right on 1732 on the contract itself is kind of hugging it. I suspect it will go to a D above 1777. I suspect it's going to come back to 1732. This 200 period moving average, which it hasn't even touched since it broke down back on the 29th of October, is going to be very important because you want it to turn into support. My suspicion based on the weekly chart is that it's actually going to trade between the 18 area, maybe just a tad higher or a tad lower, somewhere around 18, with good support at 1665 to 1650. So sugar is in, within a, a trading band, and I think it's S, SSG, um, SSG ultra short uh, semis, no, SGG, 
Well, anybody in the den, can you tell me the uh, iPath Sugar? I've got it. The iPath Sugar has made, is making a peak tier right now. There's that nine-period moving average at 58.57. I love the action. I just think that it's a little extended. It needs time, a little bit like gold. It needs a little time, and then at any point in the next three to five sessions, preferably next week, but if it doesn't do it next week, it has to do it the following week, it wants to challenge the bar of the week of the 15th of November, which has a high of 61.43 in the SGG, and I'll do the sugar contract itself. Oh, I'm going to go to the M contract just for now because March is coming up too soon. Oh, I can't. I don't even know what contract people trade. I'm going to go to the H for now. You can extrapolate that, in, that data. I can't go to the H because it's not showing up. SG, SG. I'll go to add SG. It's very close. This is the continuous contract. Yes. SB. Oh, what's the matter with it? It's SB. So the, the S, oh, there it is. This is the contract that I want to look at. It is the continuous contract. It's trading at 1792. So you extrapolate that data to what you're looking at in sugar. And what I'm looking at is sugar should go at some point. 1856 is the 200 period moving average. That will be my target. If at any point sugar trades above 18, 1825 to 1832, out of the blue, you're suddenly looking at the 200 period moving average becoming a target on the upside. But be prepared that there could be a consolidation, and the consolidation could be in the, uh, I don't know if you use the continuous contract, but uh, I'm just going to say for now, between the 835, 835 area and the 1740, uh, maybe 1710 either, uh, it could also be a, a, a touch. So that's what I wanted to say. So that's sugar, and um, and uh, thank you, thank you for uh Oh, thank you for being a subscriber as well. Uh, Steve uh, sent a question here. He, um, I don't know if it's the same Steve that asked me the question on, on Wednesday night who was at the meeting and asked me about peak Gs. I thought I'd do this last night, and then you asked another question. Let me just see here. So the question is um, Amgen, Amgen. Amgen, oh, this coincides with what I'm looking. Amgen in the weekly chart might be making a G slash C. So that was that was what I I typed in there as the way I use the alternate wave. But in this particular instance, if you look at City and you go back to last year, there's a there were two. Um, let me go back to last year. I've got there. There were two that could, are just distinctly G's. There's nothing else that they could be. And the one was um, on the 11th of almost a year ago, 11th of March. It went, first of all, on the, in February, the 19th, February the 19th, it went to 44.71 peak F. It pulls back very sharply, and then starts a very quick single move to the upside, and it goes to a single move, and then plunges back down in that A pattern, like the capital A, uh, the uppercase A, the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. And what happened is that, yes, it could be called a new A, because he never broke to the bottom and, and took out the low of 40.28, but everything about it says that was a conclusion of a previous move, a bull move, and it's a right arm extension because the MACD did very well. The stochastic turned around immediately after it made that G. So it, it, that's the right arm extension, and that's that leg that went on the 11th of February. Then what happened is it went again to a peak F after a new buy signal to buy mode on the 22nd of May at 52.89. That peak F pulled back for one bar, very sharp, and then it went. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investor Investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Learn about good health and fitness. Living a Primal Lifestyle with Nico and Paige, next on TFNN. Hi, Ron Basil Chapman. Just real quick, to, uh, congratulations, Jan, in the den. I know that you've been using the Chapman Wave Myth Dodgy in your monthly charts for ages on Merck. Merck is in C, legs C in the monthly, almost at an all-time high. All-time high was back in uh, 2007, December, 61.62. It said 57.34, leg F slash B in the daily, leg C only in the weekly. Oh, man, I tell you, this is just a beautiful chart. Congratulations. And you've mentioned many times. And uh, Merck in, in, the, in the monthly is in C, but underneath the previous all-time high of peak E back in 2007. I'm looking very strong. I have a cycle book that says that by June of this year, it should hit 63, uh, 61, 62, uh, four points away <laughs> the way it's going now. I don't know if it'll do that sooner, but that, that's, that would be a cycle day. Now, the other thing is ZU. I had a question about that. Uh, Dale asked about it, and Dale, I've got ZU, which is, uh, is uh, oh, look at this. I wrote it way down there. That's how much it's gone. Z Zulily Inc., uh, A shares, caters to moms. Oh, I forgot all about that. Oh, caters to moms. That was just, oh, what more do you want for a stock? All right, leg B in the monthly, very positive. Leg B in the weekly, very positive. But right now it's got a D in the uh, daily having gone from the 3840 area very quickly to the high of yesterday of 7350. So I suspect that within 75, we were 75, somewhere around between, between 75 and 76, 50-ish, just somewhere around there, 
I'm not sure this thing moves so quickly, but I'm thinking that based on the 120 minute chart, which is made a peak D, I'm suspecting that there's a limited from the previous high of yesterday, 7250. There's about two to, to three points to the upside, and then I think it's going to consolidate. So all I can say is if you're in it, just hold it. I would I would start to take profits if it took uh, out 7350 by by just one penny, I would just lighten up a little bit to reward yourself, and that money can be put back if at any point in the next uh, week or two it drops between between um, to 63 to 59. Somewhere around there should be really good support, and I'd, I'd put that money back. Uh, you know, just uh, money management, that's all. So now let's go to the final couple of things. I was asked about Yuri. Oh, I remember this one. I've always looked at this, this one, never got it. And it just goes straight up, United Rentals, leg E in the, in the monthly. I've got it as a leg F in the weekly. Couldn't recycle, but I'm calling it F for now. And in the daily, all it needs is to go above 89.10 to 89.11. It's at 88.93 right now, up 85 cents. And a sauce leg D, it's holding really well. It's got 86 to 85.44 support. But I'm suspecting that when it's concluded this move, it might have to take a bit of a breather. So that's Uri. I can't remember who asked me about that two days ago. Then the DAX. I think I showed the DAX. Finally, I've got the chart right here. DAX monthly. I've actually only got it in peak C right now with an instant restart back earlier on. It has gone to peak F before. So this And it does peak F um, frequently. It's done it twice out of the three times that we're looking at in the long-term charts. Peak C in the weekly, and all it needs is to go above 97, 94.05, and that'll start leg D. I think I've got to all the questions that I was asked. Great. Now, there's one thing left. Before we wrap up, you've got Friday, uh, Sunday night with the futures that are going to open up. The Dow's now broken the resistance. It's up 114. I love this move. We are long in my opening call. We are long the S&P via the 300% long position, and we have, a number of, uh, we have a number of long positions, and we have two short positions. So we'll see. I'm busy holding thumbs here. Um, but so far, looks so good. Now, you remember that falling axe formation? The one that can give you a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. I don't want to even talk about it in the Dow, but I can tell you this: if the Dow breaks into the sixteen thousand six fifties next week, I'm going to have to reconsider when to be going short. Um, so that's it. Have a wonderful weekend, and don't forget, stay tuned. You've got a Nick Owen page coming up. Great shows all day, and my services go from evil. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.